crystal numbskull. <laughs> Nothing new to add here but personal sadness and disappointment. What a great franchise this was. What a lovable character. Now destroyed by pure Lucasian incompetence. <laughs> Lucasian? <laughs> Is this a new word? Lucasian. Wow. wow. Indy himself was one of my childhood heroes. Heck, I even love the TV series. But Ooh, when I oof. saw this one, I almost puked my guts out. I, mean, I can't blame him. I, I did too, but I suffered through. It wasn't that bad. It was pretty bad. It was pretty bad. That was a one-star review for my MTV. Hello, and welcome to Spoilers Intended, a podcast about series and films. I am your host th- tonight, today. I don't know. Whatever this time you're listening, you're listening to, to it, this. yeah. I'm your host Andrew, joined as always by Ryan. Hey, 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 and Stephen. Hoy, hoy, hoy. <laughs> <laughs> Today we are talking about the fourth film in the Indiana Jones franchise. I f- feel like we went too far. There's only three. They only made three. The one many would say is the best. I believe. I think oh. that's a popular <laughs> online opinion, isn't it? Oh. Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull that yes. came out in 2008. Yep. Directed by Steven Spielberg, written by George Lucas, mm-hmm. and um, and David Kep. and David Kep. He did there. something. He contributed somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> His name is first, so like he probably did the bulk of it. And George <laughs> Lucas behind him going, "Oh, make make the the I don't want to spoil anything in case anyone that hasn't seen Crystal Skull." Uh, <laughs> Make the monkeys do things. All right. So, yeah, that's what we're talking about. And uh, if you have listened to any of our other Indiana Jones episodes, we are Mm -hmm. basically doing a series all the way up until Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny that comes out July 4th weekend. Oh, yeah. Oh, celebrate. uh, Yeah. So, you know, it's it's coming out pretty soon. But before that, so we we both are all three of us, not both. Yeah. All three of us just watched this last night. Yes. Yes. And we did an audio commentary that you can go listen to or listen along with while, our commentary. While you watch the movie, yeah. 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 Uh, Mystery Science Theater 3000 style. Yeah. Uh, and you get to sync it up and you can go watch it on, you know, whatever your your device of choice is. Yeah. We also have the a for free that you can just go listen to now. Uh, so the the Indiana Jones, yes. the Crystal Skull commentary is That's for patrons. Patreon. Yes, yeah. Yeah. at the low low Ryan's price of it. one dollar, <laughs> you can get access to all of our bonus content, which now includes commentaries, commentaries. that we're going to be throwing on there. And the you know right now, if you're listening to this episode and you're interested in Crystal Skull, you probably want to check out our uh, Crystal Skull commentary. It's, it's something. But if you want to know what a commentary with us is like, right now on the main feed for free, we have a uh, commentary for Star Wars: The Phantom Menace. Yep. Uh, definitely worth checking out. Absolutely. Yeah, real some real entertainment there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so before we kind of get into talking about Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, yep. that's going to be the full name. Every time I like we have the to stink reference. you put on that Kingdom, was, yeah, that was some, Kingdom some of the Crystal Skull. <laughs> there, like, <laughs> so before we do that, uh, yeah. this movie has kind of been monikered as the new jumping the shark. It's nuking the fridge. Right. Yes. Yeah, the new yeah, phrase that came out of what this it is. movie. Yeah. So if you are unfamiliar with what jumping the shark means. Uh, the phrase refers to a scene in the long-running 70s sitcom Happy Days in which it is comically cool main character Arthur Fonzarelli <laughs> the literally Fonz. jumps over a caged shark on water skis. That stunt was so unlike the Fonz and outside the Happy Days world that it came to be seen as a cheap stunt. So generally that means that by the time a franchise has essentially run its course on good ideas, mm-hmm. yeah. they just use a gimmick to get people to watch the show. This is kind yeah. of like a, it's like a turning point where it's it's past its peak and this is the moment when everyone looks at it and goes, oh, this show is in decline. It, was this a mistake? Yeah. 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 So yeah. that's kind of like I want to hear hear some other ideas or, or kind of what we think of other franchises that have jumped the shark at certain points. All right. Yeah. doesn't, you know, it doesn't have to be a TV series. Yeah. It can be a movie. It can gotta, be a book. Gotta be a, it's got to be a franchise. It has to be a you franchise. Have, it's got to be something prior to yeah. it that was, that peaks and then. Correct. Steven, what was yours? I want to hear yours first. Okay. I'm going to be controversial here. Maybe a little bit. I chose John Wick. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I think that's Which John Wick? See, this is, uh, this is what I've been debating. I don't know. See, I feel like, obviously, the first one was what it was, right? Yes. It's very grounded, mm-hmm. and, you know, some of the Secret Society stuff was a little questionable, but it was, for the most part, it's, it's very... Kind of, I mean, like, the Secret Society stuff is kind of fun. It is fun, but, it, you know, this is where you have the risk of really getting way out there. Yeah. I feel like somewhere in the third movie, and I'm pretty sure it was the dog fight scene oh, that, that goes on for, like, ten minutes. That was going to be... so. <laughs> 
Oh, I almost chose John there Wick it is. three. Yeah. yeah, because of this scene. So that's John Wick chapter three, Parabellum, mm-hmm. and yeah, it's it's just this insane scene where there's just dogs going everywhere, attacking people, and there's gunfights. And like, I, one of the things I really liked about early John Wick is that the fights tend to be very brutal and very short. Yes. Like it may be multiple people or whatever. He's moving down a hallway or whatever else, but like, there's no like long confrontation unless it's with someone who's really, really capable. Well, and they right, kept extending yeah. out the fight. Yeah, scenes. Uh, and as we go, and we saw it with four as well. You know, we have a review for that. If you want to listen to that, you can hear me carry on about this there as well. <laughs> uh, but every time they do these stunts, they just kind of keep doing them. And then they're like, that was really cool. Do it again. You should do it one more time. Keep going. Can we stretch this? Do it again. <laughs> and it's just like, guys, like that was a really cool stunt. But now that I've seen it four times. I'm just kind of like, apparently this is easy. Like, I yeah. don't know, you know. So that I think that was my moment when I was just kind of like, okay, yeah. we're you getting kinda, really you out, check out here. A little bit where you're kind of like, all right, that, I'm pretty sure well, this is it. You almost get fatigued. Yeah. Like there's so yeah. much to a lot of the action scenes. There's so many action scenes that like I still like three. Like mm-hmm. I like the John Wick series, but like I will fully admit that like if someone was like. They're exhausting. The the action scenes go on too long. You're not wrong. It's really, it reminds me of like a lot of times when you see like a director's cut and it's like, you know, 10 minutes of extra footage and it's like just they extend some of the action scenes. Yeah. And you're like, it affects the pacing. You're like the editor, but you get some cool action scenes and more stunt work. So it's like a, if you're into stunts and fight scenes, it's a good thing because it's like more. Mm -hmm. But if it, it, it does, to me, sometimes come at the cost of like, yeah, the pacing of the film. So this is not jumping the shark material, but this is definitely pacing material. Mm -hmm. So we just recently watched all of the Lord of the Rings extended editions. Yeah. And there are some really interesting scenes that they unfortunately just left out probably for timing issues and everything. It's just, it's it's too unwieldy after a while. Man, some of the scenes add so much extra time and they ruin the pacing of a lot of the films, particularly Fellowship of the Ring. Yeah. yeah. Two Towers and Return of the King, they're already relatively long films, mm-hmm. but they're not packed in with how much information that needs to be added into Fellowship of the Ring to make it a really good cohesive story yeah. front to back. And that's my favorite out of the three. And just watching it, just it felt so slow mm-hmm. compared mm-hmm. to the theatrical cut, which I absolutely love. Yeah. The other thing about it, too, is that they have to, like, remaster all the songs because now the scenes are longer. Right, yeah. And I don't like the remastered versions. Anyway, sorry, that's a tangent. That's a tangent, that's a, yeah. Off on a rant over here. I like yeah. both versions of all of the films because... Theatrical cuts. We only got so much Lord of the Rings material to work with. We got a whole yeah. lot of what we get. yeah. I do like That's some fair. of the extended versions, like some well, of the stuff they add. In Return really of the cool. King, there's some fantastic scenes that get added. <laughs> Welcome to our podcast with a podcast. <laughs> the talking the rings. Talking talking. At some point, we need to, you know, we need to. We will have to put do those up. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome to the Peter Jackson fan cast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, who's up? All next? right, I'll jump in. Uh, I'm going on a, uh, to a sitcom from 2005. Okay, How I Met Your Mother. Ooh, oh, see, yeah, I, yeah. I never could get into this show. So he, here's what happened to me with How I Met Your Mother, right? So I, I fully admit it's not like a great sitcom, mm-hmm. right? But much like American Pie, like came out when I was in between junior and senior year in high school, mm-hmm. right? American Pie 2 came out when I was in college, there in college. Mm-hmm. American Wedding came out when all of my friends were getting married. It's like these movies that like... They were perfectly they, timed they, for yeah, your life. They, so yeah. I discovered How I Met Your Mother in like... 2010 after I had moved to a new city. Yeah. And so it, it ve- definitely, I was a single guy in you're, a new you're city. You in that stage where you went out drinking every yeah. night with friends. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. I was, I was Local living bar. the same, like, yeah, you're you know, living this life. Life. Living life. And so it, it spoke to me on like a weird level and it was, you know, pretty funny. Like the writing is pretty good. A lot of the times it's, Overall, not a great show, but like there's definitely a lot of funny moments that now, again, it's one of those things where like in hindsight has been sitcomed and memed to mm-hmm. the point that it's like what was special by the end of the series was just ruined, right? Yeah. yeah. And so for me, I don't want to talk about a specific moment where it jumped the shark, more a specific season, and that yeah. would be season eight out of nine. Oof. Now, the first issue here is they should have stopped at, like, season six. Mm-hmm. Is, so for anyone not aware, like, basically it's about uh, this guy named Ted – and the whole premise of it is each episode starts with him, like, talking to his kids from the future, mm-hmm. the story of how he met their mother, right? And then it would flash back, and you have a whole episode. And His it's kids all... must be bored out of their minds. Right. Dude, can you it's imagine a... just years of him talking? <laughs> You've been listening for <laughs> Grandpa, days. Grandpa, get there already. And so for me, the, the problem was the premise of the show and, and the things that they had to work with mm-hmm. – 
could only last so far. Yeah. And yeah. then CBS being CBS was just like milk it, milk it, Make milk us it, more milk money. it. Yeah. And so by season eight, like characters aren't even acting anything like how they used to. Like mm-hmm. you've you've transformed it to the point that it's not even the same show almost. And then at the end, they basically, I'm not going to say what it is because we're yeah. before the spoiler wall, but there's like the twist of who the mother is, is like, oh, wow, that's a, I yeah. didn't see that coming. And then they don't have the courage to stick with it. Mm. And then they undo it they right undo before the, the credit. And you're yep. like, wait, what? Or they don't undo the twist. They undo like the. That's always the worst whenever yeah. like yeah. the creators of the show or writers or whatever, directors, doesn't matter. Whoever is working on the show, they can't. They don't have the the gumption to just, the, just yeah, stick with well, it. Yeah. And again, it felt like they should have wrapped this up around season five or yeah. six, and it would have it would have ended on like a high note. Mm-hmm. But kind of like Breaking Bad, where like it, it unlike Breaking oh. Bad, rather, oh, okay. they didn't oh, have. Oh man, well, 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 you know, Breaking Bad ended in season <laughs> yeah, yeah. six, right? It, it was like they had a roadmap yep. that like ended. This felt like they had a, a beginning point, and they kind of knew where they were going to go, and then it just like went off the rails because CBS kept being like, yeah. "We need another season." Well, and you can feel that, you know. Well, because I, I know, at least with Vince Gilligan, I know AMC asked him multiple times to keep oh, yeah. the show going. And he was like, no, 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 no. This is where it has to end. Well, and I've never looked it up, but I know the writer's strike happened somewhere in, in there, too, because mm-hmm. it came out in 05. So I feel like that was before the end of season nine. But anyways, it was a great show that I just slowly lost faith in as I went. And then it tainted the entire show for me. Yeah. Like I never, like in the season nine, I didn't watch any of it. I watched the finale of yeah. the, the series and was like, that was bad. I'm done. And now I can't watch any of it. Cause it like gave, it, it just <laughs> ruined the, it's the bad, it puts bad, a bad flavor. Yeah. yeah. It's a bad taste in your mouth. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to go with something relatively on brand kind of. Yeah. Uh, so we've already done a whole series on this franchise. We're doing, I'm going bond. Oh, okay. okay. We're yeah. going uh, to the final Pierce Brosnan film, Die Another Day. Does he actually jump over a shark in that one? Because he uh, may. He, he could, probably surfs I mean, over one. Yeah. Connery <laughs> has you going over a shark at some point, right? Uh, in Thunderball, yeah. But yeah, like, that's, that's not jumping over the shark. He's just fighting one. He's just well, fighting you know, one. Same idea. <laughs> so anyways, Die Another Day. Die Another, die another day. day. So we did a whole series on Bond, and we had a whole bonus episode of where we rank all the Bond actors of who mm-hmm. we think is the best. And yep. you can go listen to that if you want to listen to you know who landed where yep just a dollar a month and we did actually give pierce brosnan quite a quite a high rank here yeah but i'm not going to tell you who that is or what rank where, that he, where he landed yeah, where he yeah, landed yeah. but so die another day is probably one of the worst bond films period hands down i would it's gotta, it's gotta be up there it's gotta be up there and so a lot of people i remember whenever this came out mm-hmm. and i saw this in theaters i did too <laughs> that people were really uh, upset about the invisible same. car and that actually didn't bother me all that much because right. it had limitations and that's fine. Okay. What bothered me, the rest of the movie, <laughs> everything else. No, on a, okay, the Madonna like, song was, <laughs> no, the Madonna song's terrible. So Back another day, <laughs> but if you have, uh, these kind of, so you have like this, uh, satellite that can like shoot down this ray of sun or whatever. And it yeah. stuff or whatever. And there, the whole theme is that they're in an ice, like they're Palace, like Greenland, Castle, I think, or something. Or whatever. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and at some point he gets chased by this satellite in a, in a rocket car. When you he, say chased by the satellite, though, beam, it's not like it comes down to Earth. The, it's the beam yeah, is the yeah. beam is the chasing. Satellite. <laughs> <laughs> and that would have been cooler. At some point, he basically <laughs> yes. takes a parasail mm-hmm. from the from the rocket car and uses the hood of the thing to basically sail on the tsunami. I wave. forgot about yeah. this, but now yeah, I remember you, it. I remember this too. This yeah. is so bad, and it was. I remember it because I went and saw this with my dad. Yeah. And we, we both kind of like looked at each other. We we're like, what I, is happening? I, right what now? is this? I saw this movie with my girlfriend at the time. Ooh. Yeah, back in high school. I was just like, oh, man, this is terrible. Girl, I'm going to take you to see Die Another but, Day. But so, you got to entertain yourself somehow, right? See, like, not, like, the rest of the film is really, really bad. The, mm-hmm. the bad guy is not very interesting. Right. Then you have absolutely terrible chemistry between Halle Berry and Pierce Brosnan. <laughs> oh, it's terrible. So do you think the, the, the hood riding is the jumping the shark or the whole movie is no, the, the jumping hood, the shark? The hood surfing <laughs> is the, the hood, the hood the surfing shark. is definitely right up there. Right. The other scene is whenever they kill the henchmen with like these this like laser array and like she 
Halle Berry is like jumping in between all the lasers, and then like one shoots. Like you can see all the lasers, of course, because mid two thousands. Yeah. And then to kill him, it basically shoots through the back of his head, through his mouth, mm. and it's just like this big red beam that goes out, and it's really, really bad. Yeah. It's just poor CGI. It sounds bad. All around. <laughs> yeah, everything. I mean, I really saw it, again. I saw it in theaters. It's a terrible movie. <laughs> Woof. I, I, I have wiped it from my mind for the most part. I remember <laughs> I, like random bits and scenes and like, well, like the ice on the, on yeah, the invisible car. On I had the ice. forgotten. See, I remember the car on the ice. I yeah. had forgotten about the surfing bit. I had to. Like, oh man, I remember when that happens. Every, uh, time, every time it kind of comes on, we're doing like a Bond rewatch. I'm like, all right, maybe I remember <laughs> it wrong. <laughs> so you've seen it 10 times and 10 I've times least, it's been I've bad. I've only seen this film probably four times. Oh my God. Well, you'll never get that time back, Andrew. <laughs> For those at home who don't understand, Andrew will consume literal garbage at any given moment. He is the <laughs> raccoon of the podcast. <laughs> yes. All right. So speaking of um, maybe garbage, I don't know. <laughs> Raccoons? Let's, let's <laughs> move on to Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, Indiana Jones. Yeah. So the fourth in the franchise. The fourth movie. Let me hit you with some yeah, info. Yeah, give me the here. info. Obviously came out, like we said, 2008, mm-hmm. directed by Steven Spielberg. Mm-hmm. Written unknown by, person. Uh, unknown. Who, whoever this, this new startup kid is, is Steven Spielberg. Uh, David Kep and George Lucas and others is how it's labeled in writing. So wow, who knows how many people. Yeah. Uh, John Williams' music, probably the best part of this entire thing. <laughs> yes, by, you got by a wide margin. Harrison Ford, Kate Blanchett, Shia LaBeouf, Karen Allen, Shia Ray LaBeouf, Winstone, LaBeouf, John LaBeouf. Hurt, and many, many more. But those are the big names. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're looking at a box office. Well, the budget was $185 million. That's really high. That's pretty for, high. That's 08. For 2008. Yeah, that's, that's pretty yeah, ambitious. That's pretty yeah. high. The domestic take was $317 million, Ugh. Wow. Which is like that's that's pretty low. lower than I would have thought, but still probably. Way more than I thought they'd do. No, yeah. no. I mean, I definitely think that they would have made their money back. Yeah. But like you would really think that you just having the Indiana Jones name to it, having a 14 year hiatus. Yeah. Indiana Jones, Harrison Ford, Spielberg. Like there's a huge name yeah. attached yeah. to this. So the worldwide take was $790 million. So it, it did pretty good. It did pretty well, yeah. Uh, yeah, the plot summary is, in 1957, Indiana Jones becomes entangled in a Soviet plot to uncover the secret behind mysterious artifacts known as the Crystal Skulls. Oh. oh. And that is our info on Indiana Jones. Yeah, so this film, whenever it came out, was not mm-hmm. very popular at all. No. Uh, with fans. I mean, clearly people went and saw it. Well, and that's the thing that, like, people it's always tough to, it. to gauge off of box office is that you have this, like, huge hype you know, yeah. around a movie, regardless mm-hmm. of if it's good or not. And mm-hmm. then everyone goes to see it. And then everyone is talking about it so much, whether they, they, they want like other people yeah. want to go see so it. Other people want to go curious. see like, it couldn't have been that, that bad. bad. You yeah. Know, yeah. And then they go see it. So like you almost have to, from a film studio standpoint, it's almost like, it doesn't matter. It's got Indiana <laughs> Jones in the title. They're going to go see it, you know? That, yeah. yeah. And that's kind of, I feel what a lot of this was banked on yeah. when it comes to like box office and everything, because the film itself, if you're comparing it to the other three, is absolutely the the redhead the stepchild. Worst. Yeah, by sure. far the worst, and yeah. that's that's saying something because Temple of Doom's not like a great. I mean, movie. Well, there was of, such a big gap between them too that like you can't I really cons- I, I you can't even really consider them even in the same franchise. I mean, like you can. I, I you don't definitely know. no no. I agree with that first statement because technically the Indiana Jones is a trilogy, and then there's this budget knockoff. The, budget that <laughs> the higher budget, budget knockoff. Budget. <laughs> it feels budget, which yeah. is saying something. But okay, yeah. So let, let's hear some thoughts. Yeah. So this movie, to me, is like the first half of it is tolerable. It's like actually fine. It, yeah. I would not say it's like great, but it's like okay, yeah, I can hang in here. And mm-hmm. then right around like the halfway to slightly past the halfway point, it just two goes. Thirds. Yeah, yeah. It goes off the rails, and then it just like it never recovers. It kind of like continues this like you know, steep decline into mm. just bad CG, you know, poor action because of the CG mostly. And then yeah. like, just like, I don't know. It, the, the plot does not go where I felt like was a satisfying place. Mm-hmm. So by the time you get to the end of it, you're just like, what, what are we doing here? You know, <laughs> what do y'all think? So I, I agree with that concept. Like, so so like, Stephen had not seen the film. Yeah, this until is the first, yeah. time, we did our first time I had ever seen it because I heard bad things and I avoided yeah. it. I've seen enough bad movies at that point in my life. We were having this discussion prior to You've seen uh, Electra, Daredevil, <laughs> Ghost all the Rider, <laughs> just, just all the best hits. Uh, so it starts out and it's just kind of middling. It's a very yeah. neutral film, and you're kind of like, "Well, this is 
it's not like great, but it's not bad. But it could at any given moment, right? You could have that inflection point. You can bend up or you can bend down, mm-hmm. and it just goes down and down and, and just down. keeps going down. <laughs> and, well, and I feel that after a certain point, they double down on oh yeah, like the CGI. Well, and oh, oh no, hold the, on, the over the top action. I've got a good, I got a good piece of trivia here for you on the CGI. Are you ready for this? Sure. Yeah. They almost did not allow Harrison Ford to wield the whip. What? Why? Oh yeah. Because of more like safety restrictions and rules or whatever, Paramount executives were pushing for it to be CGI. Oh my god. And Harrison Ooh. Ford actually like put his foot down and was like, No. <laughs> right. There is no way that I am not physically using the whip. Like this is this is part of the iconic thing. Can you imagine how bad the film would have been <laughs> if he breaks out the whip and it's that level of CG because the CGI is not good. Yeah, no. it's just not good. The the big issue with this film, I think, is because it came out in the mid two thousands. Because at this point, everyone felt that it was okay to use CGI, and it is and, okay to use CGI. Uh, no, hold on, no, no. Well, it is okay, tastefully and well placed. It's totally fine. I, I think the problem for a lot of this, and we'll, we'll really get into the nitty gritty past the spoiler mm-hmm. wall, is like there are production techniques in place in this movie like the lighting and like a lot of the green screen work and a lot of the CG that just weren't things that they dealt with with the other Indiana Jones movies so immediately from the get on the very first scene it feels different it already feels different and not in a good way not in like a ooh look what we can do now with modern technology the first the very opening sequence which again I can't go into the actual details but it actually feels very much so like kind of like the opening of Last Crusade and it's like oh okay this is kind of has that same Indie feel. Feel to and it, then it yeah. like everything shrinks down and collapses into what feels like a soundstage with kind of odd lighting and then you have the CGI added and it's just like there's a lot going on in here that doesn't fit. It's really for me the visual look of it doesn't yeah, it feel feels quite weird. right immediately but like the tone of what they're saying like the writing and the, mm. the pacing of that opening scene isn't terrible. No. You know no. it does feel like Indiana Jones. But Again like we said it's, it's a pretty neutral start. It's not a yeah. bad start. It's a fairly neutral well, start. It, so, I just remember being in the theater and seeing like the first scene where he's talking to Kate Blanchett's character and they're obviously lit on a set or on a green screen. Yeah. Not in the real world, and uh-huh. immediately being like, "Ooh, okay, all right." It feels very this much feels, so like a large sound stage. It kind of reminded me, and not to the same extent, but almost like um, the Great Gatsby or like um, one of those other Baz uh, Luhrmann oh, movies, I could say, where it's kind of meant to feel Sky like it's a Captain film the from the tomorrow. '30s. Not kind quite of thing. Sky Captain, but like, yeah, like that kind of like it's it's clearly shot on a set or on a green screen, and we've got the fake sun backlighting. See, I like know. that though. Not in my Indiana but Jones see, though. But see, That's, if the other Indiana Jones yeah. have been shot that way, yeah, then sure. it would never stand out. Or if this was just a different pulp, like if this was the Rocketeer and they had this, I'd be like, yeah, it's a cool technique you got going on there. Yeah, it, that's my thing. Like, I don't mind it in those other movies. Mm. It's just like that's what that movie is, and that's the stylistic choice. This one felt like a weird, like, it felt like they, they could only have access to a studio lot, and we can't afford to go out on, on location, even though we got $185 million budget. Well, you know? So I, I think one of the things, too, is Spielberg really wanted to – push harder into the Pulp Fiction style storytelling. Not the movie this. Pulp Fiction, like Pulp y- y- Comics. Yeah, 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 yeah like yeah, Pulp yeah. Comics yeah. from like the, the 30s, 40s, everything. Yeah. And with that, you have these very specific lighting styles and compositions and whatnot that goes into these scenes. And I personally liked it. I like, And that's kind of where, like from the stylistic choices, I actually didn't mind the film at all mm-hmm. until you get to some really poor CGI later in the film. See, I mm-hmm. hated it. I was on the other side of it. Of yeah. like, I appreciate well, what it is. That's it just, totally fine. It doesn't belong yeah. in my Stands Indiana out. Jones. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's to me, it's like it's too late in the series to go for that that type of a yeah, look. You're, you're committed to an archetype yeah. at this point. You need to stick to. A, yeah, you have a, three other movies that are feel. like. Well, like if you I'm, watch them back to back to back, you get to this one, and all of a sudden, it looks like a different. You well, because you you like especially at this point, because fourteen year hiatus from mm-hmm. Last Crusade. Whenever you look at this from that perspective, you want it to be, like Paramount is looking at it from oh, this is going to be a soft reboot of the franchise yeah. for this generation. It is, yeah, and that's what they wanted out of it. And I feel with that, you have to look at it from two completely different standpoints. Of like, you have the original trilogy, 
and then you have this, which is a completely different style and feel. It's the same thing with the Star Wars prequels. It, it compared did feel to the like original, the prequels, yeah. Because the prequels feel completely different, obviously, they stylistically. Do, yeah. And mm -hmm. even the same thing with the sequels feel right. stylistically different from everything from else. From the prequels, yeah. I got I got a math check, Andrew, here on the 14-year the hiatus. It's a 19-year hiatus. 19-year hiatus. I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. You hit me with that, and I was like, wait, no, Last yeah, Crusade yeah, was not it, made in the was, mid 90s. Yeah, it was 91. 89. 89. 89, 89 to 08. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, sorry. That's my fault. No, no. I no, just, yeah. It's you, just, you threw it out there, and I was like, oh, hold on. I, I did not I come out after Jurassic Park. <laughs> you, using the, the Star Wars prequels as an example is, is a good and apt yeah, comparison because is, George yeah. Lucas is involved with both. But, like, it, it's not even, to me, for this one, it's, it's not even the... Remo removing the visuals, right? Yeah. Because that is a sticking point for me, but it's not the deal breaker. For me, it's the the plot of what they did and some of the, it, well, it definitely felt like you're saying like they were trying to set up a new franchise. A franchise. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're trying to reboot it for younger people. Right. And they have, you know, they have Shia LaBeouf in there to hopefully grab the reins yeah. whenever Harrison Ford decided that he didn't want to do it anymore. And no clearly, one wanted it. Yeah, clearly <laughs> the, it didn't work out. Yeah. But that is clear. That is definitely what they're trying to do here. Yes. With that. Yeah. And, you know, you uh, you still had great music from John Williams. Yeah. Which, like, yeah. I listened Fantastic to the soundtrack. Music, yeah. yeah. The, the music's phenomenal. And, and there's he, still some really good shot compositions. There's there really, some really are. good, like, angles. And, and the, Steven Spielberg's still here. It's yeah. not like he, he, he phoned know, it in. Phoned it in. It's just. the So the other issue I feel with this film is there's narratively speaking it's very inconsistent with mm -hmm. the the mechanics that they use to move the plot along yeah and i can't really get into obviously specifics until no. we get past the spoiler wall but, but they, they definitely pick and choose when this specific MacGuffin is going to like impact the, the scene and yeah. when it's not going to and it's not and it, and it yeah. like and it's not even like oh it's like one way in one scene and then, you know, halfway through the film it changes. It changes on a per shot basis. Right, in mm -hmm. the same scene. And, yeah. it, mm -hmm. and, like, that's what really takes me out of it immediately, especially mm -hmm. at the beginning of the film where you're just like, okay, well, this is interesting mechanic that they're using, but if you have any idea how magnetism works, this is just not how it works. <laughs> well, it, it just shows that they didn't put the TLC into, yeah. like, making sure that it was consistent. They didn't care. They were like, this is just an excuse to go on it's an gonna, adventure. It's going to sell. Go. Let's just get I, there. Not, yeah. yeah. yeah sure if the writer's strike had anything to do with the inconsistency here because i yeah i don't i don't know it may have yeah. but i mean like honestly if it's mostly george lucas and then uh, he probably there probably was david knapp or whatever a his big name was, like, impact for it and it's just george lucas yeah, so it's lucas. just lucasian if you will lucasian, lucasian yeah. if, one, <laughs> if, if i might and i think it's it might be too that they may have had this script in hand for a while too and they just they, yeah, they, they did just yeah. To wait. yeah they did i know luke or uh, not lucas spielberg was kind of reignited to start trying to look for this back at like the very early 2000. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. So, you know, we've kind of talked about our thoughts here and there. Would you rewatch it? Would you recommend this to anyone? Because we, we have to think about it from the perspective of there's a new Indiana Jones coming out mm -hmm. in uh, over July 4th weekend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So do you think that we need to watch this before we watch Dial of Destiny, or can you just kind of completely skip this? Obviously, we won't know until we watch yeah, so the that, film. That's sure. highly dependent on the subject matter of Dial but of I, Destiny. My my, f my gut check is that you can skip this entirely. I don't think I've seen anything in any of the Dial of Destiny trailers that make that it look would, like you have to. Yeah, which, I don't. And when you think about the indie there. franchise in total, like you don't have to have watched Temple of Doom in order to watch Last Crusade or no. would, yeah, because they're, they're meant yeah. to be anthol anthology kind yeah. of. Yeah, they're like very style. much a separate story. Yeah, they're episodic. Like there are there are characters that spill over and there are mentions of things like yeah. offhand at best but it, it's it's Mostly really just the, the plot doesn't yeah. hinge on knowing what happened right. three movies ago yeah, yeah. right because like technically Temple of Doom takes place before Raiders but mm -hmm. like if you watch Raiders after it you watch it Temple of Doom it, yeah, it it's not like it, you get more out of it because yeah. you know where he's from it's really just as long as you know the character you're good so me I probably would not rewatch this just because it to me even though the front half is passable the back half is, is bad enough to where it doesn't pay off enough to be a satisfying rewatch. Like if my yeah. wife was like, I want to rewatch this before five comes out, I would sit there with her, Yeah, but I would definitely have to have some beer or <laughs> something else to keep me <laughs> amused. Beer, to popcorn, get through. your yeah. phone yeah. handy. Something to, to get through it. And then uh, would I recommend it? I mean, if you're if you're a fan of Indiana Jones, you've probably already seen it. But if you haven't, I think it's worth checking out just because there so are can, some moments in yeah. there that are very indie. There, there are some good chase scenes there are some 
like you know shot compositions and stuff but like overall yeah you're you're really kind of sifting through a lot of kind of guff yeah well like steve do, do you feel like you missed out on anything by not watching this when it came out no. Right. So like, I don't <laughs> Not at all. If you haven't seen this movie, I don't know that you're like, I gotta watch it. I mean, there, you know, there are some memes and stuff kind of lampooning different things where yeah. I was like, well, I don't understand what that means. Like y'all are both prior to years. Oh, just wait till they get to the monkeys. I was like, well, I don't know what that means. <laughs> but, what are the monkeys? Are the monkeys? <laughs> yeah. is, that a, is that like a euphemism? Is the band like, the monkeys in yeah. this movie? <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, I, I feel like I didn't miss anything. You know, I've mm-hmm. gone 15 years without seeing this film until yeah. now and no, no real thing of value was lost. And, you know, maybe, again, this is a, a good movie to get together with a group of people and you all haven't seen it in a while yeah. and throw it on and let's have some fun and make laughs with it. We have a commentary that would be great to go along with it. That I would think be great. that might yeah. be the only way I can recommend this film. Yeah. Would be if you don't have friends around to lampoon it, you can just, uh, if you're a patron, you can put that on <laughs> yeah. and you can have instant friends right there. For the right low, there. low price yeah. of $1. $1 a month. That, that is the only way I recommend it is watching it with our commentary. Yes. <laughs> Just like ants in the jungle, spoilersintendedpodcast.com is crawling with content. Oh my gosh. You can get any of our previous episodes on there, as well as links to our Patreon, our Discord, our socials, everything. Andrew, what do you think about our Discord? I think our Discord is honestly pretty great. We have channels of what we're, you know, obviously what we're listening to, what we're watching, what games we're playing, but we also have what food we're eating, what we're cooking. Yeah, I think that's really fun. We also have a pet channel. We just get to post yeah. random pictures of our of our cats, cats dogs, and dogs, lizards. I don't know. I you never know. I mean, and there's there's some great discussion there that's not episode related, but there's also good you know good whole spoiler thread if you want to talk to people about specific stuff or different TV shows that yeah, are ongoing. Absolutely. As well. And also another great place to interact with us is on socials. We have count them one, mm-hmm. count them two, two socials. That's right. <laughs> yeah. we're on Collect Insta- them all. We're on Instagram. We're on Facebook. And every week we post out there, you know, what we're watching, what we're, what's coming up in the, uh, the review pipelines that you can watch along with us. If you want to keep up with the cast or at least have an idea and be like, Oh yeah, you know, something like heat. I haven't thought about that movie in ages. I should go rewatch that. You should go rewatch it. Yeah. We have an episode out that you can listen to right now. Shameless yeah. shill. It's a good episode. And we are back from the spoiler wall. Um, I, I was trying to think of another way to say spoiler wall, but it's, there just isn't a way to. The do. lost city of the spoiler mm. wall. The kingdom of the, sp- the crystal spoiler, spoiler wall. wall. <laughs> that's, that's a terrible spoiler wall. You can see right through it. We crawled over the prairie dog spoiler wall. <laughs> the, the poor CGI prairie oh, dogs. Yeah, those poor prairie dogs. <laughs> but we are back. It's yes. all spoilers all the time. If you haven't seen this film and you don't want to be spoiled, now's the time to leave. But don't leave. Just go watch the film and then come back. Yes, indeed. Yes. So, all right, let's just get into, unless you have any trivia. I was going to say, yeah, we want to kick this off. Let's do some trivia. trivia. So I want to start off with the biggest piece that I have found in here that I thought was very interesting to me. Okay. So we talked about how this was supposed to be the start of a franchise. Like, very obvious that they wanted to reboot it. They had uh, Shia LaBeouf in there as the the young gun. He was so hot right now at Mm -hmm. the time. So he actually absolutely ruined his relationship with Spielberg. and Because of his acting or what? Well, and Ford in interviews after the movie was released. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. So really? this is. Oh, yeah. No, no. So this is a quote here. Um, I'm gonna pull pull this up here. So this is Shia LaBeouf. I feel like I dropped the ball on the legacy that people loved and cherished. You get to monkey swinging and things like that, and you can blame it on the writer, you can blame it on Steven, but the actor's job is to make it come alive and make it work, and I couldn't do it. So that's my fault. Simple. Right, so yeah. he said this this ruptured his relationship with Spielberg, and that Spielberg like pulled him aside and said, "Hey, there's a time to be a human being and have an opinion, and there's a time to sell cars, and you chose the wrong time." Ooh, got him! Wow, interesting. Right? <laughs> like Harrison Ford said harsher things as Ford would. It's, it's <laughs> no, things I can't say on here. I'll I take think. you up in my plane and crash it, kid. <laughs> yeah, so, get off my plane. So that yeah. that is part of why he has been fired from the franchise. Like Among why, other things. Well, I'm I mean, sure. other, other reasons. Well, but but it's part of, you know, it was before he had kind of his spiral, right? At the time, he right. was he was hot. He was, he was yeah, in everything. So, yeah. I'm just looking through his filmography just for that time, right? So he had, he was in Constantine in like 05. Oh, man, I forgot he was in that. Yeah. He was in Disturbia in 07. He was in Transformers in 07. 
He was in Indiana Jones in 08. He was in Eagle Eye. Remember that one? I remember that one. Yeah. I yeah. don't remember that one. I actually, I actually didn't mind Eagle Eye. It's not a great film. No, it's, but it's pretty good, though. Yeah. Uh, uh, Wall Street Money Never Sleeps is 2010. He was in, let's see, a lot of this. This is where it starts to kind of like spiral Yeah, I, th- out. I felt like the Wall Street one was like the last one that I remember him being in. And he's in other stuff, but like that, that little era in like the mid aughts is when he was like. He he was yeah, he had yeah, shed his like but he got Disney Channel that. kid yeah. like image was he Disney Channel kid or Nickelodeon? He was Disney even Channel. Disney Channel. Channel. Even yeah. Stevens, that's the only way right. I know him from. Okay, so he had shed that image mm-hmm. by the mid two thousands yeah. and like yeah tried to tried to become the star. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. what other trivia you got? Uh, let's see. So this is just a small piece here, but so the girl who punches Shia LaBeouf in the bar diner fight scene uh-huh. is Spielberg's daughter. Ah. So oh, I, thought, wow. I thought that was kind of cute. And so after Shia said that stuff, he's like, I need you to hit him again. <laughs> <laughs> Find him and hit him again. Uh, let's see. So obviously they asked Sean Connery to come back for a cameo. Yeah. Uh, they also asked John Reese davies mm-hmm. um, Both turned it down for different reasons. Connery was retired and had no interest in Not a chance. I mean, it's because out. of uh, League of Extraordinary yeah, Gentlemen that, ruined, that completely ruined him. Ruined him. Yeah. Uh, but John Reese davies basically said, well, you know, he, they wanted him to be a cameo in the wedding at the end. Yeah. And he was like, well, it just, like, it doesn't make sense for me to be there in terms of, like, there's no, it's just kind of a cheap ploy. And yeah, I think to, it, it to, lessens the character, mm-hmm. right? It's pandering. It's it's fan yeah, service. It it's is. not functional. Yeah. yeah. So so this was the first film that Harrison Ford and Kate Blanchett have worked on together. Okay. Mm, okay. And when they were both introduced to each other, they were both in costume. So they went through <laughs> a long period of shooting right Uh uh-huh and then ford kept seeing this blonde woman on set and he didn't know who she was and (laughs) so he asked someone who is who's the blonde girl like that's that's your coaster that's kate blanchett but he always saw her with the wig on so he didn't realize yeah uh another fun fact harrison ford fact here what a harrison ford thing to do yeah right (laughs) it's a very uh very ford fact here so he kept himself in such good shape Mm -hmm. that when it came time to fit him for his costume his costume in 2008 is the exact same dimensions of his costume from 1989. It wow. just fits. Right? <laughs> like that's, that's, that's awesome. pretty great. Like it's, it's almost like he's, you know, made for it. Yeah. Well, like, Molded I mean, he still, for he him. still did a ton of films, obviously in between that. Yeah. 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 It's not uh, like he went off the face of the earth. No, or something. no, not at all. So Karen Allen, yeah. uh, mm-hmm. Marion was not aware that she was going to be in, that she was in the script oh. until Spielberg called her. January of 2007. And said, why aren't you on set? Yeah. Well, he basically, he said, it's been announced. We're making Indiana Jones 4. Guess what? You're in it again. So apparently Karen greeted Spielberg about the same way that Marion greeted Indiana back in the bar in Tibet. Because they had kind of a problematic relationship. But she's Mm -hmm. also kind of like, are you you serious right now? Yeah. Like very much so doubting him, which I also (laughs) thought was pretty funny. Uh, Oh, so when they did, speaking of CGI versus practical, right? Yeah. When they, because we're going to get into spectacle here in a moment. Yeah. When they do the scene where Indy drives the truck through like the wall of like crates or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they actually had timed explosives to blow the wall up as the truck went through. Yeah, of course. Uh, One of the explosives did not go off. And landed in the seat with Harrison Ford. Oh, no. Oh, my yeah. gosh. So, like, this film, not only was it not, you know, the greatest effort that I've ever seen on on screen, it also almost killed Harrison Ford. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's, uh, that's just a little, little block of trivia. There'll All be right. some other pieces scattered cool. around here. Just some funny things I saw. Yeah. All right, so let's get into the spectacle. Yeah. Uh, I'll just go ahead and start. Yeah, go I, I feel that I'm probably the most positive here. I, I did like the the really pulp lighting, and mm-hmm. I mean, it definitely felt like a stage, uh, sound stage at a lot of time or most of the film. Yeah, which it's fine whenever you have that kind of style throughout the whole thing, and, and it was very consistent. Mm-hmm. Spielberg definitely did it a lot with like the lighting on some of the scenes were honestly pretty fantastic. Yeah. Oh, there's some but, great setups. Yeah. There. But it's, it's definitely one of those things where I can completely understand why some people like Ryan would mm-hmm. not really enjoy it just because it is very different than the original yeah. trilogy. And if you, you know, if you try and look at it from the perspective of this was a failed attempt at a reboot, hopefully another trilogy, more films, whatever, this was going to be the style that they were going to try and emulate going forward because they wanted it to be more like, you know, the pulp comics of, you know, the 
30s, 40s, and 50s. Yeah. So whenever you have that kind of thing, I thought he actually recreated it quite well. The problem is, is that it was muddled with terrible, terrible CGI oh, yeah. from mm-hmm. the from the mid-aughts, which just doesn't hold up at all anymore. It didn't even hold up back then because it just looked cheap It, it looked and bad. bad. Yeah. yeah. Especially whenever you're coming from Last Crusade, which has some phenomenal practical effects yeah. and stunts. That just didn't exist in this because everything is CGI. Or just kind of like even the classic like matte painting yeah, of, right, of that yeah. era, right? Which it, maybe it's not perfect, but it still holds up better than this ever will. a $185 million will. budget. Like, come on, guys. I, th- I think the, the budget probably just went towards the sheer number of special effect shots they had yeah. rather than the quality. You know what yeah, I mean? Like, sure did. It, the, it, like, it, it felt too much excess, especially yeah. in the jungle chase. That, that sequence alone right there is like 90% of like the special effects issues in mm-hmm. one scene. So yeah. interesting fact about that jungle chase, mm-hmm. that was actually so- shot on location in Hawaii. They had a whole track set out, like a big area of land in Hawaii yeah. that, where they had a, a, I mean, I a track cut through. Yeah. And they had you know, another path built where they could follow it with the mm-hmm. cameras and everything. So a lot of what you see on there isn't actually CGI. It's just they're working either with the characters themselves when they do close-ups or they were adding or removing branches. Well, I know some of the the crane shots, though, are CGI because the trees are, like, fake as all get out. Oh, yeah. Right? yeah. yeah. That, now, yeah. that I'm sure was probably... Like when he's doing the splits across both of them, and it's just green. Now that's just Shia yeah. Oh, that's that. yeah. It's just how he rides between jeeps. <laughs> well, and yeah. also whenever you go back and you look at those kind of shots, right, like a crane shot or what would be a helicopter shot, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's interesting to just kind of think about like how expensive that or how hard it might be if you're you know flying over a jungle. Whereas nowadays in modern filmmaking, like drone, you just, just use a drone. Yeah. It's, it'll fit right. through Dr- yeah. all these spaces. Drone Look great. Technology. It's, has, oh, it's, it's changed so much about filmmaking. It's such crazy. A, I, I mean, thinking back to like, again, you were mentioning the beginning, Lord of the Rings, some of yeah. the fight scenes, chase scenes through the woods uh, I in mean, Fellowship. It's so expensive. And it do. had to be so expensive because yeah. they had to have a helicopter and all this. And nowadays you could do it with a drone. You could get higher quality, closer shots, cost is low, like mm-hmm. craziness. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I feel like to me, the spectacle, obviously, yeah. we've already said before that I didn't really care for the lighting. It, it's more because I remember distinctly in the theater, like my friends and I, this is 08, so this is about what, three years after Revenge of the Sith had, had yeah, come out. Correct. And like mm-hmm. all of us, for the most part, had the same feeling about the prequels. It was it just like, too much. It was the light, yeah. it was too much green screen. Yeah, it was of CGI. Just... It was the, so this movie felt like a continuation of that filmmaking style. It and did. at yeah. the time, especially, we were like over it. Oh yeah, we, I was already calling for more practical effects mm-hmm. in OA and like already being like, CG needs to be done, you know, selectively and yeah. when it makes sense. Mm-hmm. And so for me, like that was just the, not the nail in the coffin, but like the the straw that broke the camel's back. Was it yeah. like when they and again that opening scene where he's talking to Kate Blanchett and you can tell that they're on a sound stage and not on location and not on location. It felt like the prequels all over again of mm-hmm. a, again, I like the idea of the prequels. I just don't like the execution. Yeah. This hit me immediately, you know, at the front of the movie of like, Oh no, we've prequeled Indiana Jones, you know? Cause mm-hmm. that was again, <laughs> the, the, the fear going into it that uh, some people had was because George the prequels Lucas. had just came out. Yeah. Lucas is on this one too. Mm-hmm. This is the other big franchise he's kind yeah. of attached to. Uh, and I think that, so that tainted a lot of people's, view of it but when you look back at 08 and the way they did a lot of filmmaking with like the lighting yeah. and CG and green screen work it was like that weird era like the mid aughts where we we can do stuff like this like you're saying that we don't have drones that can get these shots so we'll just do it in CG but yeah. CG wasn't quite there it wasn't there yeah, the technology not wasn't far up to enough it it was just yet. that growing pains of like once mm-hmm. you get past like 2010 or so most it's, things it's look better. pretty good yeah, yeah like it, it gets to the point to where we kind of catch up and I think it's because James Cameron had just come out with Avatar in 2009 right so then people now have access to that Technology. It really pushed right. the technology, yeah. 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 This uh, movie, if this would have come out like two years later, maybe. Maybe. <laughs> it would have maybe. been. Maybe. Probably not. But. but yeah, for me, the spectacle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably not. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, it, it's not just the lighting and the bad CG, just to harp on that. Yeah. It, it's, it's, I, I do like a lot of the costuming. I like the, some of the action sequences. Some of them are kind of muddled. I actually really um, like the sequence of. Uh, Mutt and Indy on the bike being oh, yeah. chased through the college campus. That's a good, that, and that feels that very is. classic it does, Indiana yeah. Jones. It does, and it feels it, unique because it's in America on a college campus, uh-huh. not in some kind of, you know, desert well, third world country. Yeah. Yeah, on a really jungle. good joke of, of 
um, Indiana Jones talking to a student, just like yeah. completely nonchalantly. Mm-hmm. It's like right. get out of get out of the library. And so that, that, <laughs> there are moments in this movie that I do enjoy that I do feel like are classic Indiana Jones. It's just there's there's a lot around it that, like especially by the end when you get to the point with. You know the the look of the aliens, the look of the ship, the look of all the debris, yeah, the, oh, the, the, the jungle. ship looks oh, man. terrible. Like, just terrible. All of that, just yeah. Look, and so compared to the other Indiana Jones movies, you know where you get to the end, and that's the the big special effects reveal. Like in Raiders, you have the Ark and all yeah. that, mm-hmm. and then in you know Temple of Doom, you have like the heart and like all you know, the, well, the minecart chase. You have the, the minecart chase, and you have the you have the the real oh, the bridge, finale of the, the big bridge. bridge. Yeah. Oh yeah, the bridge. Yeah, 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 yeah. the bridge is the best part about that film. And then yeah, in, in three you have you know the the knight and the grail and all that mm-hmm. stuff. All that feels like a good satisfying finale visually well because it, it's all practical it's all m- yeah. for the most part real well, and to, to that point in the movies you haven't seen a lot of the stuff that you're going to see in this movie you yeah. know like when you get to those points in this one when you get to the end there i feel like i've seen better cgi by 08 or better implemented cgi i guess yeah. you know the way to think of it what do you think so, steven so uh, i ran across some interesting stuff here just kind of scrolling through right mm-hmm. so this was actually shot on film mm. not, not shot digital. digitally yeah right yeah. Uh, so I wonder if that was some influence of where you you it really stands out as opposed to it feeling maybe a little more blended. Could have been, yeah. Uh, and then also, so this was uh, the yeah, cinematographer was uh, Janice uh, Kaminsky, mm-hmm. who has shot all of Spielberg's stuff since Schindler's List. Oh wow! Okay. So because he was replacing uh, Douglas Slocum, who's retired, who yeah. shot the original three yeah, Indiana, Indiana Jones, Jones films. Yeah. So uh, he said it was very interesting because Spielberg had to go back and rewatch the films to kind of tell, you know, what he was like as a director from 20 years yeah, ago. Yeah. Cause it's, you know, 19 mm-hmm. years. And then uh, Janice had to go back and copy someone else's style style in yeah. order to. So I, I do wonder if there's just so much in that big ball there where yeah. you can feel the seams more. Yeah. Cause you're really trying to put, you're trying to get this big ball moving mm-hmm. and there's only so much leverage you can get into it when you're not using the same, I mean like Spielberg's the same director, but it's 20 years of difference. There's a huge, he's shot all kinds of different films at this yeah. point. He's done, I mean, obviously she, you know, stuff like Schindler's list, like there's been minority report. There's so many other huge things difference. that happened before it. Yeah. yeah. So it is interesting to look at that and think, well, maybe this is part of the factor and maybe they should have leaned less on trying to imitate everything from the before and maybe it would have been felt more cohesive. So this is actually just a thing too, because he, he did world of the worlds in 2005 and whenever, whenever I go back to that film, I actually really like that movie quite a bit. One, because it's Tom Cruise, yeah. but the CGI in that is actually really, really cool and <laughs> well, it does a good job. They also kind of, again, they kind of cheat the CGI there because a lot of the CGI happens in the dark or it like does, a darker yeah. scene set. So you can get away with a lot and, more. And I, I feel yeah. that the success of that may have muddled up some of the, I'll say the hubris going into Indiana Jones. are like, oh, we just had a massive success with, with War of the Worlds we can probably get away with it here and it just doesn't work here because it's it's more bright there's the most of the scenes in world of the worlds take place at night you know yeah. so you have a lot of this kind of, uh, well, kind and they, of going they, into it especially with revenge of the sith which was a massive success mm-hmm. right so i don't know i mean like this is but, postulated but with with world yeah. of the worlds right they they play with that right because again it's dark but they use like really contrast lighting kind yeah. of spotlight style lighting mm-hmm. a lot and again, you get away with it. You have a, a kind of a looming CGI in the background. There's a spotlight on you. You yep. can't really see because you know the character's blinded, so you're blinded. Yeah. Like they, mm-hmm. they play that a lot. So it works there, whereas here it's just broad daylight. Well, and he did Munich in 05 also, like yeah. right after Minority Report. Also a movie with like a lot of dark, natural, yeah. grounded lighting and scenes. And so I wonder if it's just like he's not in the swing of... He's just too far away from Indiana that Jones era. anymore that like, yeah... I don't yeah. know, it's definitely a factor because yeah. everything you all have brought up is you know basically the same thing as I was looking at too, where it's like, well, this feels, the CGI looks like rubber. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the, nothing really c- is coming together the way I thought it would in terms of like, this feels like there are some really well set up shots. Yeah, for sure. And you know, we, again, we talked about this on the commentary when, when they hit, they hit where we're like, oh, this is really well designed. Like they yeah. have, you know, the shadow here, and the contrast and the different light, like this is really well set up. Yeah. But those are kind of the the oasis is in the desert here. Yeah. Oasis. 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 Breath of fresh air amongst yeah. everything else going on. We were like, oh yeah, that's really good. That was cool. Yeah. More and of that. We're back Please? To no. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So so let's move on to performance. I don't yeah. want to I don't want to harp too much. That's fine. <laughs> time. Uh, I, someone else start. I started spectacle. Stephen, go for it. 
So, I mean, you know, it's, it's Harrison Ford in his probably the role that he likes the most. It is definitely done. the role he likes the most yeah. that he said multiple times. Yeah, and I think for his part, it, it flows pretty well. Yeah. You know, the, the dialogue he was given feels very Indiana Jones, yeah. kind of the interactions like we brought up with the, the college scene in the library yeah. when he makes the comment. And they're playing back, right, back to Crusaders. Yeah. Where he talks about there, talking to the class that, you know, 70% of your work is done in the library. Yeah. Which, of course, in that film, you know, X marks the spot in mm-hmm. the library, yada, yada, yada. But they're making that joke. I think a lot of that works. I think where this film really suffers is... Actually, you know what? I'm going to let somebody else cover that bit. If you don't, I'll come back and harp on it. Okay. I'm going to continue a good train here. The best piece of chemistry is between him and... I've already lost her name. Karen Allen? Karen Allen, yes. Marion comes back. That felt very smooth, very natural. They play off each other well. And I think she has a a more expanded role from She does. She uh, she gets a little bit more screen time than just just say indie indie. a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, So I thought that was great. And I'm going to leave it at that for y'all. Okay. I'll jump in. I think the biggest problem this movie has in the performance department is that Indiana Jones and Shia LaBeouf do not have the same level of chemistry that Yep, Harrison Ford and Sean Connery had in Last Crusade. You'll, no, that well, that's the thing. It's like what a shock, you, right? I, yeah, well, you can't. It, it's so hard to compare that, though. But here's uh, this is the thing that that bugs me is that like when you, especially watching this right after we watched Last Crusade. Uh, uh, no, this is fair. Yeah. <laughs> it, it is painfully apparent that like in that movie, it was almost an effortless effortless level of like you know, interaction and, and chemistry between the two of yeah. them. And when you get into here, it ne- I never fully feel like Mutt and, and Indy click at all, for me at least. Like, it yeah. always feels like we're on, we're being told that he's probably Indiana's son. And then, like, when, when that switch happens where he realizes he's his son and he's like, you need to finish school, that moment doesn't hit for me like it should. Like, on paper, I'm sure it was like, this will be a scene kind of like out of, you know, last yeah. crusade mm-hmm. where like the father and son are going back and forth. But when it happens, it, for me, at least it's, it feels way cheaper and way more hollow than like what it should have, what it could have. And I don't know if that's because of the writing, the style of shooting. Again, we're 20 years away from, you know, last crusade and mm-hmm. it's just not there. Or if it was, you know, Shia LaBeouf and, and Harrison Ford just didn't have the same level of chemistry as he did with Sean Connery. But that's what I wanted going in. Like, if you know that that's the plot they're going to do, it's like you have to find somebody that like has that instant chemistry, just like they found with like Temple of Doom. They saw him and uh, short round, short, short round, round Kei yeah. Huy like, yeah. and they had this instant chemistry in the auditions, <laughs> and so it's like boom, you have to have that. And it felt more like Shia LaBeouf was cast because he was a big name at the time, and not yeah. because he was right for the role. That's my opinion. So, so I, I, I'm on board with Ryan's opinion. Thank you. Okay, I mean... Go ahead, Andrew. Descent, <laughs> if you can. Oh, oh. You're sinking in sand. <laughs> oh, gosh. It's, not, quick, sand. it's not quicksand. It's, you always feel when you're young that quicksand is going to be a much bigger problem. It's not an issue at all. No. I say that. I'm going to die tonight <laughs> going home with some quicksand. <laughs> That's going to be the obituary. Ryan passed away this yeah. weekend. A he freak got quicksand pit freak in quicksand. the middle of 459. <laughs> he died saying, <laughs> what are the odds? <laughs> what? Why did I pay more attention to the 80s? <laughs> I knew it would get me. <laughs> and at the bottom of the quicksand, there's piranhas. Oh, of course. Yeah. Because, that was another you know. big issue. Okay, so what, what, do you, you disagree? You think they do have good chemistry? And you no, 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 no. Okay. I don't think they have good <laughs> <laughs> No, okay. I don't think that, that Shia LaBeouf and Harrison Ford have very good on-screen chemistry. Yeah. However, I don't think... Or I think that Shia LaBeouf actually wasn't a bad pick to be that character. Mm-hmm. He fits the 1950s greaser style, mm-hmm. um, really bullheaded kind of character. That was the type of character that he, he really kind of moved into. Yeah. And I don't think that it just works with this specific script, I guess. Yeah. But they, because they don't have the on screen chemistry that, you know, obviously like Sean Connery sure. and Harrison Ford had, but I don't think that really you can really compare that well and, okay so here's here's a, not a counterpoint i'm kind of adding to what you're saying here. Yeah. the the character he's playing is such a like a hard shell 
Yeah, well, you know, he, he he's grown up with essentially out of debt, without mm-hmm. a father. Right. Yeah. Uh, his his you know he's had a, a tough life growing up. Right. Mm-hmm. At this point, he's been in and out of school. He dropped out. These kind of things. Like this is this is very much like he is playing a teenager that is jilted by life. He's a greaser. You know, that's already a different kind of type of counterculture in the 1950s. Sure. So you have this this kind of character that is meant to be this brick wall of right. You're, but you're not you're not going to have this this emotional connection like you are going to have with Harrison Ford and right. Sean Connery. No, no, but see, that's the thing, is Sean Connery's character, right, in Crusade, is the brick wall. Yeah, for he's movie. the same but, no, but that's the thing, though. He is, but you also know immediately that they are related. Well, you do. Right. That, you don't really catch it in this. No, you don't catch it until yeah. they basically spell it out for you. But in this, like, what they really they needed was they needed that shell to crack Realistically, it would get a little soft, and we, we just never get that. And, and like, like happen, I said, yeah. and that's I think that's more of a problem with the script and not necessarily the actor because I definitely think that he was a good yeah. choice for the role. I just don't think that it fit with the type of script that they had to write and the type of emotional payoff that we, the viewers, were looking for. See, I, I hear what you're saying, and I, I agree to a point. I think but, my my problem is just with Shia LaBeouf as an actor at this stage in his career. He hadn't done anything on screen that made me go, man, this kid is talented. Watch out. And he did movies after this where, like, he showed, like, the depth of mm-hmm. his ability to mm-hmm. act, I feel like. But, like, leading up to this, you got, like, Transformers and Disturbia. Yeah, he, he's very and, much kind of a yelling teenager. Yeah, and yeah. so when he, we got to this movie and he's he's playing, like, a, a greaser-type character, mm-hmm. n- nothing about his performance made me go, like, oh, this kid right here has got it. This is the well, the, 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 the character, to, the actor to watch out for in this movie. Well, it was just, like, it's yeah. Shia LaBeouf. Well, because if know? you look at, like, I'll say other quintessential greaser films, like... Grease. Well, not even Grease. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was going to say outsiders. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You have these, like, because that's kind of the whole thing is, like, hard outer shell, soft inner. Sure. Um, inner meat. Biker with a heart of gold. Yeah. Inner, yeah, meat. Yeah, yeah. inner meat. Inner <laughs> meat. He's become, like, a lobster. Don't we all have in soft there? inner meat? <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure we all have soft outer meat. The bones are on the inside. Oh, There's gross. no exoskeleton here. <laughs> we have the inner skeleton. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> Why did that sound great? Why did you say the that? The way you way? looked at me over the <laughs> screen. <laughs> Anyways, go ahead. But yeah, um, so, you know, still in performance here. I'm not going to harp on Shia LaBeouf as much. But uh, Kate Blanchett, I, I thought she did a fine no. job. I mean, she's a fantastic actress. Yeah, this I, is not her best work, though. Like, she yeah, did good. She did functional. Oh, I think at the end of the day, it just comes down to limitations of the script. Like, there's did, only yeah. so much on, on display here. The, yeah. the thing, the problem is, too, is that, like, I really wish that they would have just, you know, casted a Russian actress so, that could speak English. It's interesting you bring that up because for all of the soldiers and everyone else, they deliberately cast Russian actors. I know. So they would have authentic yeah. accents, and then they just have Kate Blanchett. Blanchett. Yeah. <laughs> well, because again, at this stage in Hollywood, especially, they're, they're casting based on bankability. Yeah, well, yeah, well, yeah. well, Paramount is out there saying, yeah. "Who's gonna Who's gonna fill seats? I want butts in seats. I need a name up there. We got mm-hmm. Harrison Ford. That kid Shia, he's hot. Let's get him in here. Yeah. We need a female. Let's Let's go through the Rolodex. Who we got? Kate Blanchett, let's go. She's she's hot. Let's well, I mean, go. yeah, she's just popular I mean, off girl. The aviator, yeah, uh, you know, like that. She's a great actress. Yeah, she, she is. is. Absolutely. And, but yeah. it's just one of those things where I just wish that they would have cast just a Russian actress. Well, I think too the 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 pivot to Russians as the bad guys is like it is a softer version than like something like the Nazis, where Nazis are just so easy. To root against, you well, know, yeah, it's and, so and the, easy. And the Russians at this point, it's the Cold it's War. It's the Cold War. It's it's you know, it's not a hot conflict. You don't have you know, right. Just, it's just a different type. It of, is. Yeah, of, it's a different yeah. kind of bad guy. That like, yeah. you don't want it to just be a secret group of Nazis in the fifties. You can't. That really was make the that original work. script. Was it really? Yes. Wow. <laughs> okay, so you know, we're gonna uh, just move on to yeah. score now. And, yeah. you know, I think this is just definitely one of those things where there's going to be a very quick score of the score that doesn't have a score. Oh, we need to get a segment in here. Where's that, uh, that jungle bit y'all were playing earlier? Oh, the, the, of the name of the, the song? Yeah, one oh, of I'll the, pull it up uh, real quick. the Adventures of Mutt. <laughs> what uh, was the name of it? Hold uh, on. <laughs> is it Adventures of Mutt? It is the Adventures of Mutt. Is that the uh, jungle swinging one? No. Oh, I was thinking about the jungle swing. No, the jungle swinging one's not that. Oh, great. okay, never mind. Then it is. No, no, no. The Adventures of Mutt is is probably my favorite track of the of the soundtrack. Get, get that in there. John so. Williams absolutely kills it. I love the strings in this. Yeah, like this is this is good yeah. stuff. It's 
stupid title, Adventures of Mutt, because because they gave him a terrible name. Yeah, is this when they're on the bike in the library? Yes. 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 Yeah. Okay. Well, it's yeah. a very Indiana Jones sequence. So yeah, this is great. It's, it's fantastic. Yeah, it has that John Williams classic indie feel to it. Really it without does. without the big horns, yeah. right? It's very subdued on that side. It's great that like you know Steven Spielberg and George Lucas has been twenty years and they're like rusty and like I don't know if we can do this again. <laughs> and John Williams is like he's hold my beer, like he's just like <laughs> yeah, he's just like nailing it, like no sweat, like oh Indiana Jones, oh he just grills his mental Rolodex, he's got it. <laughs> Whole new score. His, his eyes in, flicker. Yeah, and it's good. He, yeah. He's just walking around his bathroom. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> got it. But yeah. yeah, like so. This whole track is is really really good. The rest of the soundtrack is pretty fantastic, honestly. Yeah, it's great yeah, music. John, it's the best part of the movie. It really is. Yeah, yeah. And he absolutely kills it with it. We can all agree there. And yeah, that's, that's I, pretty easy. I have no notes for for John Williams on, on the <laughs> yeah, score. I think it's by far here. to me at least the best part of the movie. Yeah. Yeah, there's there's definitely stuff in there that's worthy of you know, like a movie soundtrack rotation just on your you know I know Andrew you already said it's on your playlist oh 100 percent but like it, again it is kind of cheating right John Williams is just you know being John Williams which it is funny now that we brought up oh going back 20 years where John Williams just like flips the switch and he's <laughs> no on. problem like, really well, I mean like, he's still making music the whole time well, he but, ha- all, but everyone Spielberg's else is been the- making movies too he's yeah. just doing different <laughs> <No> stuff excuse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what's your excuse Spielberg film still works the same on this way. movie John Williams is in, in the audience going like what. <laughs> I wrote I wrote Hot Fire for this. Yeah, like <laughs> what have you been doing for 19 years, Stephen? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's move on to the plot. Yeah. Oh um, boy. And magnets. How do they work? <laughs> no one really knows. That's <laughs> the whole first sequence. Actually, no. It's the whole. It, it it's the whole goes film. with it's us the because the alien the skeleton film. is magnetic? But question mark. It's magnetic yeah. when it wants to be. Only when, when the you plot press the needs button. It yeah. To be. Yeah, the, and, and so. Again, when I saw this for the first time in theaters, I was already kind of like, mm, when it was aliens, instead of it being like, you know, something mystical mm. yeah, or, you know, like uh, really pulpy. Because pulp didn't get a ton into aliens with like adventurers. They had yeah. pulp yeah. alien comics, but it was like church it, and yeah, state. Totally you, know? Did, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was very like... <laughs> Oh, we're, wow. we're over here finding that's, idols. We're not finding UFOs. That's, that's, that's the other comics. That's you know? like the most political statement we're going to have on this podcast. That was incredible. Yeah, wow. Pulp comics that hunt for idols. They cannot go for aliens. Church and state. Um, Tintin, Tintin would have a word with that. There's a, does Tintin go after aliens? There's definitely there's, a There's a couple really? aliens, yeah. 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 He goes to the moon. Well, you know, that's different. It is different, but there are aliens too, so. Yeah. That okay. just makes me want to review Tintin. I'm down for it, always. It. That's a great film. Okay, which Steven Spielberg also directed. He right? did, yes. yes. Um, yeah, I think the the problem with the aliens is that, like, it, it makes sense from a, like, okay, this is the time period we're set in. You've got Roswell. Uh-huh. You've got, you know, Area 51. Yeah, you've got the Soviets. The Soviets. That all works. So that, that, it makes sense holistically. It's like you're yeah. saying, Andrew, it's what they do with it that kind of it just, gets lame. It's like yeah. they have <laughs> these, like, well, the, these the, magnetic abilities. What, that, if, what if Indiana Jones... And there's the Russians and Roswell and aliens. Like we're like we're just throwing this out here with no knowledge. Like this sounds pretty so, cool. So this, yeah. it's lame. <laughs> so this is my thing. Mm-hmm. Is okay. So you have like this this magnetism thing, and and we know that Indy has encountered it before in 1947. Yeah. And if he, if there was like some kind of line of dialogue that explains the type of metal that it is magnetized to, or me, that that magnetizes or something. to it's, it, it's not actually magnetic. It magnetizes. Gold, like a non-ferrous, yeah, yeah, ob- like and then it's like so different. Where it's like, oh, it's, it's bizarre. Yeah, it's like, oh, yeah, I, you know, it's like, you know, they're in the the warehouse or whatever, and he's like, well, we need to find it. It's like, I need. Do you have a ballpoint pen because it has this level of copper in or it or brass. something? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, where then it becomes a thing of like, ooh, then you can look at later scenes when someone walks in with something that is clearly brass or whatever metal that they yeah. chose. You're then like, all ooh, of a sudden, it, yeah. I know something's about going to happen with this. So I got a good one for you. Can you imagine how impossible navigating through the Amazon would be in the 50s, right? There's no GPS. Yeah. Where you are map and compass. One of those objects is highly reliant on magnetics. Oh man, yeah. And there's just this I stupid. Didn't even think about there's that. this stupid yeah. skull in the middle of your convoy, and everybody's <laughs> compass points at it. Turn right again, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Keep turning right. I don't know what's I don't happening. Understand. Why are we not getting anywhere? Oh, yeah. I never even thought about yeah. that. That's fantastic. <laughs> well, and it it 
it felt like none of the other Indiana Jones really get deep into science. They don't really no. get into well, the no, they mostly spiritual. It's, it's, and, it's right. mysticism and yeah. religious. Yeah. So I feel like the the writers and like the 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 normal you know like level of like attention to detail with the science of stuff yeah. isn't there because it's never been there. Like we've never had to drill down. Mm-hmm. What they missed was like yeah some kind of a, a layer of like. Only things that have touched the alien are now attracted to it. It can be anything: wood, paper, yeah. metal, yeah. whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Then, that, then you can have some really yeah. fun How, with man, can interactions. You, yeah. Can you imagine if it's like, well, whatever it touches to is now attracted to it? It's like, we, we, how are we supposed to get out of this bag now? <laughs> we put it in the bag. <laughs> right. and the bag's the just bag gripping just it. Like it's just yeah. stuck yeah. to it. Yeah. We've already created a plot hole, Ryan. Get out of here. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna write the next one. No. So, yeah. It. It. To me, it, it's it's the inconsistencies are there yeah. because we're looking for science, and it's like. To them, when they were writing it, it was probably just like, again, another MacGuffin, just, a thing yeah, to chase. Plot device. And it's, the difference is everything else we've had didn't need a scientific it, it explanation. Yeah. This because one everything, does. Everything <laughs> had the breadcrumbs to lead you to yeah. that point because it doesn't have like this weird overt effect of just atmospheric yeah. things. That with, anyways, it doesn't matter. Okay, can, yeah. we, can we confront the other elephant in the room? Let's go for it. Right? The events at the beginning of the film that coined its own phrase to replace jumping the shark. Oh, Nuke yes. in the fridge. Nuke, Nuke in, the in the fridge. So I don't, like, I don't, I really don't want to sit here and just bash on this over and over again. Yeah. Because. We got to talk about it, though. But we have to talk about it. So props to them, right? Mm-hmm. The, the way the whole model town is done is accurate to how one of the nuclear tests was done. They, they. You've seen yeah. the clips yes. where the buildings just get yep. wiped out. Like that's that's what they did. They they put mannequins, they put cars, they put buildings. And then like even the message, the announcement about not removing your goggles, that's something that they did at not on the site because they didn't assume anyone was actually there. But yeah. you know, around there, you know, don't take your goggles off until after you know, ten seconds after the first flash, because you can still burn, et cetera, et cetera. It's like really accurate. And they're like, Oh, he's gonna get inside the fridge, and they even show a little clip of like, oh, it's lead lined. Yeah. And it's like, okay, they're making like a lot of excuses. But that's the, here. Thing. the lead lining actually doesn't really mean anything. Well, it's just I mean, but sure, like they at least tried, right? The, they're the, making yeah, the, excuses yeah. for yeah. the radiation. And I'm kinda like, okay. I don't see why everyone's complaining about this so much. Like he's, you know, in a building, he's getting in this fridge. They claimed it's lead line and then they punt the fridge like three quarters of a mile. And it's just like <laughs> and just hundreds like, of miles an yeah, hour. And incredible. Yeah. Like, can you imagine the acceleration when that fridge initially kicked off? Like whatever it takes oh, to kick yeah. a fridge into the air, like that fridge lurches for it and you just well, sm- take the bag. To, to- Put a 1957 fridge with a full-grown man yeah, in it. Yeah, 200-pound yeah. man in it. Man, like the 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 G forces that play in that. Like yeah. Harrison Ford is just a, a human skin full of broken bones. It, it's, oh, it's yeah. Not, it's yeah. It's not the nuclear blast. It's not the radiation because he gets cleaned off pretty quickly. It is the blunt force trauma it's, of him flying through the air. Yeah. Well, and on a broader scale, it's the way that he gets out of that jam. Right. Like, I think that's what people didn't like. It's like the, he got into a fridge that got punted hundreds of miles an hour and then he just rolls out and it's like, OK, it it works for like a, a decently cool shot of like you see the mushroom cloud and he's uh-huh. like standing there. But I think in, in so many other Indiana Jones movies, you know, he, he gets into a scrape, some kind of impossible situation and he has to scramble to get out of it. He finds his way out. Cool. Well, if this is just like a bridge pretty, too far. It's of pretty like, small scale too, like like going to the bridge, right? right. He's on the bridge and yeah. he makes the threat and you see him wrap his hand around the thing and like, okay, he's got to hold on like, and he drops and you're like, oh man, that'd rip your arm out of your socket. Yeah. But like, that's a way different level of pain well, from just rattling yeah. around so inside. Here, of and he's always finding a way out of scrapes. Yeah. It's that this is, it's the, the most scale. unbelievable the way that he's done it so far. Here. That's the thing, though. Like, so let's say that the nuclear bomb goes off and it just it essentially buries him, and sure. then like you know, under all the debris and everything like that, and then he opens up the fridge, and you know he's still okay. He was in the lead line thing. He was in a, an encapsulated thing, and you know hypothetically it'd probably just evaporate, but it doesn't matter. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like yeah, we can, I can, I can at least get that because he was inside. You know, there's probably a, definitely a way that like not everything was vaporized. Whatever. But him just flying through the air is the thing that bothers me. Yeah, like, yeah. That's the only part. Like, sure. Yeah, he, like, he survived like the, the nuclear explosion. Good for him. The co- complaint right. shouldn't be nuking the fridge. It should be launching the fridge. <laughs> but, like, can you imagine, like, if that same scene, right, you know, and then it's like there's just a bunch of rubble and you see, you know, the, the U.S. scientists in you know, radiation suits going through the rubble, like, looking at the, the blast radius and how it's, and then, like, the door pushes up through rubble and he comes out and they're like, oh, holy crap. Yeah, right? right? Yeah. Like, then... 
I'm less obje- I, I don't have these objections, you know? Like it's just like if yeah, if they they, they just hear like down, a, a, a movement like a boom 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 and they open it up and he springs out, I've got to go and he like steals their jeep and leaves, like that would be more Indiana Jones or something like I that. I remember yeah. my friends when we when we saw it in the theaters complained more about the vaporization of it, not like the radiation or anything. it was yeah. like just, I mean it is a ton of all these other yeah. houses are just like gone but this one fridge is just flying just fine, you know, like yeah. that yeah. was their kind of like, that's, big That's another yeah. issue, but it, it's an know. issue. <laughs> it's the amazing. I think the amazing thing is that by the end of the film, so much other stuff happened that when right. we were discussing it afterwards, and you brought the fridge up, like, oh yeah, that was something that happened. Well, like, let's talk about the monkeys while we're here. <laughs> oh right? no! Like well, oh, no, scene. actually, hold on. Oh, okay. we're gonna, I'm going to pause this real. Qu- well, not really pause it, but okay. I'm going to. I'm going to take this back but here. Bring we it back. Are, get, we get, are some get some really positives. Get some positives. Yeah. On the thing, and I want to talk about something that I actually really did enjoy. Go for it. All right. And was really excited. Outside of the execution. Yeah. Uh, so I I remember, you know, going into this film, not really knowing anything about, obviously, the plot or anything, what sure. was where it was going. And I remember halfway through the film, whenever they go to Peru, mm-hmm. and then they realize that it's down in the Amazon, and it's mm-hmm. at, like, Mesopotamian culture, and all these other kind of things about, like, the, the Nazca lines and everything like that. I was so excited that we were going to get, like, El Dorado and... Or, like, yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, some really cool Aztec kind of uh, like big plot things that wasn't yeah. aliens just the culture yeah and i was really excited for it because i love south american culture yeah like and they haven't really of, done that in an indiana jones yeah. movie so it's well, a, the, well yeah. and you don't really get it at all in a lot of other a lot of stuff media yeah either yeah so whenever that was like happening in the film i was like oh this is gonna be so cool we're gonna get like you know el dorado and all these other kind of and yeah they, they do touch on el dorado in this bit, but it yeah. is you know it's kind of no, like nebulous right yeah, yeah and that like that was one of those things where i was really disappointed by the end of the film mm-hmm. i'm like i mean like aliens are fine that those don't really bother me at all it's mm-hmm. really the execution of it that bothered me which we've already talked about so, practical yeah interestingly enough the trivia bit here right in terms of like the the execution the understanding of like the the cultures right yeah. so and this this trivia bit refers to them as the kung fu aztecs which is again wrong they're not <laughs> they're not aztecs they're not aztecs but either way they're um, peruvian right right yeah so they say it's it's not as historically inaccurate as you might think because pre spanish colonialism peruvian indians did practice a form of martial arts known as a uh, rumi maki which translates to hard hands yeah so mm-hmm. like them like you know, having like, kind of like, like a, kung, a kung fu jump around, we called it capoeira, I think, in the commentary. Yeah. Fight is not necessarily inaccurate. Yeah. It's just, we just didn't really explore any of the, the culture. Like, what little bit of the It actual, was very surface level. It was, yeah. yeah. Well, we had a chance to explore that culture. They just get wiped out by the Russians, and we move on to aliens. Yeah, yeah. That, right. that felt really, really bad just because, like, you have, you know, these insurgents that are just killing a, an entire native culture that has clearly been, you know— Isolated and from the modern sustaining world, for right. yeah, hundreds, hundreds of years, of years yeah. and then you have them all get killed just by the Russians, that, assumingly. And then if there's anything if the Russians left, didn't they're all do it. dead from yeah. the aliens. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, because <laughs> the way the aliens took off was oh yeah. Like, well, they make a comment as like this is earth. how they 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 cover their tracks is they set up their landing sites so that when they leave, it just like yeah, it just, just destroys. No yeah. traces left or whatever. Yeah. Okay, that, let's talk was, about the monkeys. That was pretty disappointing. Anyways, yeah, you can go talk yeah. about the monkeys. We did a little positive, then we slid back. Down. I, tried, keep, I tried. We're gonna no, get off some vines. So, okay, I'll swinging. be positive for a minute. I think that the <laughs> about the monkeys. Be first half of the, the movie. Okay, the monkey that talks to Mutt is cute. It is and cute. has good hair. I mean, that's kind of the end whole of point. list. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think the plot again for the first half of this, there are definitely some indie moments. You you know where it's going. Mm. Things are, are progressing right. You're getting the breadcrumbs. Get that good map. Scene. I love uh, you know like they introduced Ox, like his character John Hurt. Uh, who yeah. plays, you know, like that idea of you have this professor who was doing the same kind of archaeology yeah. and it drove him mad when he looked at the skull. Like that, yeah. that's fun. And you do um, have some good emotional beats there with Mutt and Marion kind of like watching, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. someone that they've known intimately for a long time just right. kind of like lose his, his mind. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so, so the plot too of bringing Marion back, mm-hmm. like I don't mind that at all. No, again, I, think, had I think that was good. And again, I think that, that gave us probably the best interactions we get in the film. Right. Yeah. But, but again, someone wrote on a piece of paper that Mutt, you know, straddles a Jeep, gets pulled up by some vines, looks at a monkey, and then the monkeys decide to fight communism with Mutt after swinging through the trees. Like Tarzan. <laughs> like Tarzan. It's like the Ewoks. Yeah. yeah it, ju- it just felt... <sighs> 
Oh, you're making it's this worse. It's worse than the Ewoks you're by this far. Worse. <laughs> <laughs> At least the Ewoks are like, they have a language and they yeah. like, have, yeah, semi-sentient. <laughs> It's that, that, that scene for me in the theater when I saw it was like where I, I groaned audibly <laughs> and was like, this is, I'm done with this movie. Uh, watching it again, you know, when we did the commentary, it, it wasn't as bad because I was expecting you know, yeah, it. You know yeah, yeah you know I knew it was coming. But it is emblematic of like, I think a lot of the issues of some of the special effects and some of the action sequences mm-hmm. of the back half or the back third of the movie yeah. where it's like on paper, they're like, this would be cool. And then when they do it, it's not cool at all. Yeah. I don't know yeah. what y'all think. Uh, I mean, I I agree. I, we're kind of moving into entertainment at this point. We are a little we bit. Have, we are, we've yeah. already railed on the on the rest of the, the plot in the film, which is just inconsistent because of the magnetism of the skull. I'd see, for uh, me, that's like the least of this plot's worries. Oh, it, I get so it's a big issue, it. but it's like not See, I like, didn't think about the compass thing until like, Later, <laughs> later that night. No, no, later, that's later last night. Plot I thought about that. Yeah. And I was like, "How the world would you navigate any of this area?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you just you tell you phone the guy that has the skull like three miles. Back. Yeah, like, like how do you yeah. how do you even put that on a plane? You just crash somewhere over the Caribbean because you just <laughs> well, can't navigate. <laughs> the other thing is this: Why did it have to be magnetic at all? Yeah, well, that, it didn't, that's the thing. It's it didn't like, give you anything. Like, give us, give us a reason why certain things are magnetized yeah. to and some things aren't. Because, like, was, you already have it's a skull. If you look into it, it like takes over your mind and speaks yeah. to you on a psychic level. It repels ants psychically, not magnetically, yeah. presumably, right? Uh, the, well, no, you know what? They're they, anti-magnetic. You know what? They could have. They could have been magnetic ants. You don't know. Maybe, but like, you don't know. They, yeah. they don't like. There's, there's no a reason lot of for iron it to be in them hills. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! <laughs> They've just been eating it the whole time. <laughs> yeah. So the only reason it, it is has to be magnetic is because of the opening scene where they have to find it. Have to find and he it, uses yeah. like the that's, um, that's the problem. gunpowder and that. If you could have had any other way for him to find it, and then it's not magnetic, that never really comes up again. Other than just a couple of cool shots of like you know the coins being attracted to it. Like yeah, I guess they were trying to think the, of it. To, yeah, or like the guns magically, you know, pulling towards yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. once at or le- twice at least as a treat. In Fast and Furious, the 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 saga, Fast Nine, mm-hmm. they have an on and off switch for the magnet, so it well, it's makes ele- a little it's bit an electromagnet. More. Yeah, okay. electromagnet. It makes a little bit more sense. Yeah, it still doesn't make sense. But I was joking. There was a switch on the bottom of the skull that somebody was pushing, but a then that button. doesn't explain why like the only certain metals are attracted to it that <laughs> are definitely magnetic. All right, entertainment. Yeah, Steven. Were you entertained? Were you entertained? Uh, Are you not I mean, entertained? It was your first time seeing it. So the I'm, vast majority of my entertainment just came from being like, what? The do, what? Where? What? <laughs> you did say what a lot. I said what, what? a lot. <laughs> there, I, mean, my, I think my favorite part of the commentary is we're, we're like having the sword fight over the um, over the cars. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And Steven's like, what is happening? I'm like, <laughs> oh, you. <laughs> hang on. Wait, no, buddy. just like, you just wait. It's, it's, we're not stopping yet. It's like, really? <laughs> Really? Yeah. I think that scene would have been a lot better if he immediately would have jumped onto one of the like the same or, car, the same car, and they just would yeah. have had a fight yeah. well, on the car. Then at that point, you're basically just kind of redoing the tank fight of Last Crusade, but differently, right? Yeah, yeah. Not, and that's not, I'm not saying that as a bad thing. Oh, it'd be really cool. Like you have uh, Kate Blanchett's character and. Uh, and Mutt basically fencing over the car. So, like, you have her like on, she's the hood. on the front end. Yeah. yeah. And he's oh, yeah. on the back. And, and then they're like trying to fight while someone's trying, trying to, to drive. drive. And so the driver's dodging around yeah. like the or blades. Like, or like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mutt is trying to stab the driver as a solution. So she's defending. Yeah. Or, or like vice. Or maybe it's in Marion or, or Marian, Indian. Yeah. yeah. He's trying to protect yeah. her. And the sword is like hitting the shifter. And he's like, no. And then <laughs> shifting back. Yeah. Or like it's, it goes into like in you between the. You have so much better steering wheel that way. Yeah. They could be. there. There was a lot of potential here. Yeah. And it was mostly yeah, wasted. it's one of those things where it's like sword fighting on cars is cool. Yeah. Like, just again, base level, right? Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of stuff in this movie that on paper is cool, but it just didn't It just didn't, didn't The execution yeah. just didn't, didn't It didn't land. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, and then the aliens all combine into one and the UFO takes off, right? Like, well, And it turns into, like, the full alien. Which also, I, I mean, I have to ask the question here, too. Yeah. Just going back to I don't understand. Like, the whole point was that that the Crusader, not Crusader, the Conquistador mm-hmm. had taken the skull away, right? Correct. Yeah. And now when they've returned the skull, it the skeletons reemerge and form one alien. So presumably, back in the 1500s, all nine of those skeletons were there, ready to go. Were they Why just they hanging leave? out? It wasn't <laughs> right. time yet. I, apparently, I don't or know. Or did he yoink the alien's actual head off and then nine skeletons popped Appear. out of it, except for one without <laughs> well, a skull, and okay, he was like, no, what no, is no. this? I'll do you one better. <laughs> okay. So basically, you have this... <laughs> 
<laughs> Go ahead. You, you have this UFO that lands in this right. in this culture, and they're worshiping them and everything like that. Then the conquistadors come in. Like, check and this they, out. <laughs> they sneak attack. They kill one of them, so uh -huh. all the other aliens are there. Whenever they kill that one, all the others all die. the aliens die, okay. and then. The the culture that is still there, they basically then take all of those and they put them in the little spots. Sure. Mm. All right. I mean, that's that's yeah. fine. Yeah, and they, they set up all the traps. They're, they're, and... To them, they're deities. Yeah. So yeah. so then you you have the one that doesn't have the head anymore. Because he's like, I'm taking this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to leave these other ones. Yeah, I'm going to take whatever. this one. No big deal. <laughs> yeah, you know, I... <laughs> I, my bag Again. only holds the one head. I don't. Uh, I can't. Again, I, I don't have an army with me. This, <laughs> you're is, right. this is one of those Spanish things. galleons. Yes, this is one of those <laughs> things where it's like, what about the Spanish conquistadors? Makes you think they didn't take everything. everything. Yeah, <laughs> it's a long walk back to the boat. I mean, I just, you know. just you. <laughs> or if they brought too many of them, they're like, they're so magnetic. I killed yeah, them. We can't. I can't use my, my compass. <laughs> my, my, my cuirass. But yeah, no. Ooh. So there, there's a lot of questions there. Sure. Yeah, but. Whatever. But yeah, Whatever. I, I again, most of the entertainment just came from being like, "What is going on? Wow, this is a it's decision. a fun movie seeing to goof it, on. It is. Yeah, yeah, seeing seeing it happen. You know, again, because it's been you know years since this yeah. was kind of within the the cultural mm -hmm. memes and stuff, and I didn't watch it. So like actually seeing the fridge moment and be like, "Oh yeah, I see why people I, were, were I, yeah, upset. I understand now. Or the yeah. monkeys and like, "Oh, I see why they were like, wait for this, it gets better. You know, like." <laughs> So there's definitely levels of entertainment there. I just don't think it's the level of entertainment that Spielberg wanted us to have. <laughs> Probably not. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, I'm. I don't really have any really anything else to talk about. No, like, I mean, it, it, it to me it's okay. entertaining so from a go bring ahead. it back yeah. favorite scene. Favorite scene. Give me a favorite scene. Uh, car chase or the, mo the mo motorcycle, motorcycle chase. chase. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's my 100%. favorite scene too. I'm trying to think of another one since no, you already get said your that own. One. Yeah. It's the best scene. <laughs> like it's definitively the best scene in the movie. Um, I, I think the I think the car chase at the beginning in the in the actual like warehouse is not bad. It's not bad. Yeah, I, yeah. I like the op no ignoring the the uh, prairie dogs. I like mm -hmm. the opening sequence. Yeah, because that felt very much like the opening of Last Crusade, it but does. with the fifties twist, yeah. and then also mm -hmm. the twist of these aren't actually American soldiers; they're yeah. you know, Russians in disguise and stuff. I think I like that sequence. Okay, so yeah. actually, so while you're trying to think of a scene, I'll just say the the, the um, quicksand scene. Oh, okay, that's a good scene with yeah. the snake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the road uh, snake. Okay, so since we're we're kind of wrapping down here, but mm -hmm. before we go, yeah. uh, I don't want to talk about Patreon just yet. Okay, I want to talk about what we think is going to oh, be Dial of, Dial Destiny. of Destiny. Okay. Do we think do, how okay on the scale? Where is this one going to land? It's going to be. I think it's going to be above four, above uh, and above below King, all the other three. <laughs> I think it's. I don't think there's really any way that they can ever get the magic back from the original trilogy. Probably not. See, I think there's already just looking from the trailers, and and I I know that they're the trailers are can be deceptive and, and sometimes mm -hmm. intentionally so. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't look that good. No, it it does to me though feel better than four Ugh. especially after watching four yes. last night yes like it does feel better the, than i mean four. the the cgi will be better oh well, sure well, that's, that's just that's time by default <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I could know. probably make better CG. <laughs> it's, just, it's just like i it doesn't just it doesn't really look that good i think it does i don't think it looks see, great but see, you, you apparently have issues with the cg in the new one in the trailer i do i watched the trailer i have no issues with the cg he's it, riding it looks a horse fine. in the subway yeah, and it looks fine. It doesn't look mm. it doesn't look great, but it doesn't look bad. It doesn't look like this. <laughs> See, I think there there is a world where mm -hmm. it comes in above four and potentially it could compete with two. Not beat two, but compete with it. You mean Temple of Doom. Temple of Doom. Yeah. Yes. yeah I don't think it's going to do that. I'm just saying I think that that is like within the the possibilities that are out there yeah you could be this could be the worst entry in the franchise all the way up to it ties with temple of doom I, and I that's think, about the high high and low bars i think the best we are going to get mm -hmm. is going to be a solid c yeah it'll it'll be again four. still better than four it'd be real hard <laughs> to not beat four i, I, I think for me the, the the uphill battle this movie has is justifying its existence yeah the, yeah right like because yeah. after four after crystal skull i was like oh my gosh stop don't you know never again the yeah. horse is You've dead don't keep once. bidding it yeah like don't <laughs> resuscitate this franchise again leave it it's done you know because like i guarantee they're not even going to mention mutt's name in this one or if they do they'll do it very briefly almost like the henry jones cameo in this one yeah. you know mm -hmm. uh senior he went um, to school and died of graphite poisoning no right. one knew that was possible what <laughs> uh i i just i i think that's going to be the uphill battle this movie has with me is like 
feeling like it needs to exist and not just being a cash in and a yeah. nostalgia mm-hmm. grab. You know what I mean? Because yeah. like, and I, I want to be surprised. Yeah. Like, I, give me a good movie. I would yeah. love it if this movie's good. I love yeah. Indiana Jones. I want more good Indiana Jones. You can see glimmers of hope of it in, in Crystal Skull. You can see like. Yeah. The bones are there for some of the scenes. They just, the execution didn't work. It, and, is, did yeah. Spielberg do this one? The newest one? No. Yeah. no. It's no, the okay. first one he has not directed. Mm, yeah. Either. I'll look up who directed it gotcha. real quick. Yeah, I was going to say, I know this is this is out of Spielberg's hands for this one. So I don't, and again, I don't know if that's a positive or a negative per se. Yeah. Uh, and also, I don't think Lucas is involved either. I don't believe so. Which, that probably is a positive at the end of the day. Like, I hate to be that person, but. Yeah. Uh, he doesn't have the best track record. He, uh, well, he started out really well, and it kind of went downhill, and it was like, wow, like, I don't... Yeah, well, I mean, you know, I, I, I'm not going to get into that. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> it's it's just one of those things where, like, I, I don't know that it's... You know, again, there may not be as much um, love for it as yeah. there could be, right? Because it's not, you know, Spielberg and Lucas, ba- the band's back together, yeah. you know. So it Harrison's says there. James Mangold is the director who okay. did 310 to Yuma. Yeah, and, 310 um, to Yuma Yeah, fantastic. but so he's, got, he's got a pretty good resume. Yeah, James Mangold's pretty good. And written by Jez Butworth and John Henry Butterworth. So that doesn't tell me anything. I don't know who they are. John Henry Butterworth sounds like he sells syrup. Yeah, but like James Mangold <laughs> did Logan, which was like good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. yeah. Ford v. Ferrari. Oh, um, oh yeah! Like, oh like, man! Like I said, he's got a good resume. Walk the line. He did that. Ooh, that was stop good. talking! Stop! Oh, like, oh! It's, does Andrew have hope? Did optimism, don't give me hope. like glimmer of light, <laughs> yeah, I mean, shine like, through? <laughs> and, and Steven Spielberg, and he may have just been selling cars instead of saying what he th- said. He likes this movie. Like this is a great, you know, yeah, entry into the, the franchise new one, yeah. or whatever. And yeah. Mads Mikkelsen's the bad guy. I like Phoebe Waller Bridge. I like a lot of the characters they have. Um, that the actors they, yeah, they brought yeah. in. So, Playing. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. And this yeah. takes place in the 60s? Yes. I yeah. So, yeah. Uh, probably early 60s, I would imagine. Probably. It sure. doesn't say when it takes place here, but they play the, the Rolling Stones Woo-hoo. song that's 60s. So. Yeah. yeah. Well, but that's the thing, though. Trailer songs don't count. They are, but you can see, like, just from the costuming, it looks like, it's at least when he's older. It's definitely not well, modern yeah. day. As far as I know, this is going to be John Williams' last soundtrack that he's going to make. Period. Oh, really? Yeah, I, I'm pretty oh, sure man. he said a, that this is his last one. I don't. Oh, John, come on, you got to find a better way to go out. Well, hold on. Kingdom of the Crystal Skull soundtrack was great. I'm not saying he's gonna have bad music. I'm just saying go out attached to like a you know bigger franchise. I, I don't know. This. Indiana Jones is a pretty bigger big. franchise than Indiana Jones. <laughs> yeah, like just go hit up James Cameron and be like, I, "Yo, I'll do Avatar." I mean, 3. There, there's no there's no Star Wars films happening anytime soon. What the hell? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's sad, but true. I mean, but, well, and that's the thing. He didn't even really do anything for Rise he, of Skywalker. Yeah, he was just, they were just He using, was credited. Yeah. 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 Okay, that sounds like right. we're running down here. Yeah, okay, so before we go, we have a Patreon. You should check it out. We've mm-hmm. talked multiple times this episode about our commentaries that we've just added at yep. the $1 tier. You pay us $1 a month. You support the show. Yeah, and you get access to all of our bonus content, bonus episodes at least once a month. There commentaries. I don't know how, what the frequency is there. Just whenever we want to do them. Yeah, we'll figure it out on that. <laughs> you know, and speaking of stuff you get on Patreon, not only do you get access to all of our bonus episodes, mm-hmm. you also every now and then we'll do a uh, every now and then, every couple months, every couple months. I mean, like I can't say every every week we post <laughs> <laughs> we we post Patreon picks polls where you yep. get to vote in you know a movie that we will review that patrons get early access to, and then eventually it makes it to the main feed. And Andrew, do you want to tell us what yes. our uh, movies so are for our, this month? Yeah, our current Patreon picks poll mm-hmm. that you can go vote on right now, if you are a patron, is 90s action flicks. Yeah. So we have four films that we feel are kind of the some of the quintessential films from the 90s. They embody the 90s they, action. Yeah, yeah, they really yeah. do. So we have Demolition Man, yes. Speed, mm-hmm. True Lies, yes. and The Rock. Yes. yes. So if you want to vote, please head over to patreon.com slash spoilers intended podcast. Nailed it. So I'm going to jump in here and sweeten the pot just one more bit here oh, on here the Patreon. So if you are a current patron and you've listened to our pizza episode, <laughs> there it is. Then you know <laughs> that we are currently, we have a drive to hit a hundred patrons. Uh-huh. And when we hit a hundred patrons, Andrew is going to eat an entire white, white onion, or white or, or yellow, yellow onion, onion, like an, like apple. an apple. And yeah. now he's not getting some small teensy weensy. No, no, no. Ryan, I get to pick the yeah, Ryan apple. Ryan picking this thing <laughs> out. Onion. And we're filming this, and it's going out for all of our patrons. You get patrons. to watch me not enjoy this. I mean, <laughs> yeah. like, that's like, I like onions. I don't. I probably won't like it. No one likes them that much. <laughs> no one likes them that much. So, yeah. So, if you yeah. want to see that, you got to help us bump those numbers up on the patrons. Yeah. It's just a dollar a month. 
And, and real quick, just to pimp the commentary again, we have our, our commentary for, you know, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull on there. But right now on the main feed, you can get, if you want a preview of what our commentaries are like, we have a commentary for The Phantom Menace in the main feed, free for everybody. So yep. check it out and then come join us on Patreon. It's a great place to be. And All right. We shilled so much about this dollar. If you can't afford the dollar, we understand. <laughs> I got to keep shilling. Sorry. It's, yeah. it's, it's what we're doing right now. Yeah. Uh, we would love a, a review, a like, social media comments. Mm-hmm. You see us post, share it. Uh, jump on that Discord. Get in there and you know have a chat with us and other listeners. Uh, we'll just just get more involved. You know, help get us out there. Yeah. All right. There that we go. does sound like all the time we have for this episode. So until next time, I'm Andrew. I'm Ryan, and I'm Stephen. And every spoiler was intended. <laughs>